Okay, Doc. Thanks, uh, <clears throat> thanks to both of you for all the great information. I have a question about HGH therapy and eyesight. I've heard that HGH therapy can improve eyesight, uh, specifically uh, the need for reading uh, reading glasses. I've heard this. Uh, this is one of the reasons it was popular. It was popular with major league uh, baseball player to help them see the pitch as it approaches the plate. <laughs> Do you have an opinion on or information on whether uh, HGH can actually improve in sight? Once again, thanks so much for the information of the great video. This is an easy one. Uh, it's going to be a short one. I apologize, but uh, it all depends upon the curvature of the lens, and you know if you're far sighted or near sighted. To put it in very easy to understand terms, I hope um, what can happen with the use of growth hormone or even some um, some anabolic steroids, uh, meaning you know well, I didn't mean to put it that way. Any steroid. Remember, they're all, whether it's estrogen, testosterone, they're all steroids because they're made from cholesterol. But uh, you can change the thickness of the lens. You can change even the, the, the amount of fluid you have inside the eyes so that you can affect your vision. This is something that um, I never heard of a that. lot of people, uh, you never notice any change in your vision. Uh, no, a lot of people do mention it. Uh, I shouldn't say a lot. Some people do, um, uh, but never put two and two together. Uh -huh. But yeah, I mean, think about it. Uh, uh, and particularly with growth hormone, I could see why that would be n more noticeable. Uh, you're dealing more with other soft tissues of the body other than muscle, like you would with testosterone. So you could definitely make a change. Now, it might go the wrong way though. Again, because you don't know what it's going to do. Um, so if you're, um, I think it's... Um, and, and this, you know, it can probably be researched pretty easily to make sure that what I'm going to give you is correct. But I think typically, if you are uh, nearsighted, it can help you. Uh, it can help you with farsighted vision. I got to double check that, and it has to do again with convex versus mm -hmm. uh, concave and. Uh, and it might be even more technical than that. But again, it can affect your lens and uh, you just want to make sure. I would actually talk with the uh, ophthalmologist about which way he thinks your eye is going to go. Mm. I mean, that, that comes up with uh, like Lasix and, and, and uh, deciding whether or not you're going to use Univision sometimes or how far you're going to correct because with age, certain things happen. So that's, the, if you will, the reverse of using growth hormone. With age, mm. we expect the lens to go this way as you dehydrate etc. So we're going to correct only this far and expect your vision to get even better over the next five to 10 years as you age naturally. So again, definitely something there yeah. with that question. I just don't know the exact specifics, but I'd ask the ophthalmologist. Yeah. So, okay. It is a factor. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> I, love, I love when I read questions to the doc and he gets excited about the question. Okay. So here we go. Hey, just wondering if you could ask questions for me uh, for Ask the Doc. As I think many people will want to know if you could answer uh, it yourself. I'm wondering if we can use peptides that release GH, such as a GHRP6, Xerlin, et cetera, or even MK677, even though it's not a peptide, to increase our height, oh, to increase our height, okay. We know that GH is the biggest factor that causes us to grow. So what I'm wondering is, say a teen that is 17 or 18 years old uh, in his growth, uh, and his growth plate haven't, uh, plates haven't closed yet, could he use peptide that release GH to increase uh, his height? And which peptide uh, would be the best? Or how, how would I stack them to achieve a height increase that would be similar to just injecting synthetic HGH? Another easy, quick answer. Absolutely. Matter of fact, Sumorlin, which he didn't mention, was, I think, the first drug ever made for dwarfism. It used to be uh, named Jeref. And Dr. Richard Walker was largely responsible for its development. The problem was different forms of dwarfism uh, are just that. And they can either be helped with um, a growth hormone releasing hormone, or there's no receptor for that, if you will, and you have to go straight to growth hormone, which is what we ended up doing because that one helped people across the board, whereas the growth hormone releasing hormone only uh, affected so many people. Uh, depending on the light. type, right, right. So they went to get hours and eventually they recombinant. But this is a great question. Yeah, I got excited about this one because it's it's thoughtful. It's it's very smart. Yeah, um, and um, again, you know, Samorlin was around for a long time to do just that, and now uh, they have peptides. Uh, GHRP six would not be my first choice, only because 
um, GHRP6 tends to make, well, first of all, it works through a different um, mechanism. So you've got, uh, and I think we talked about this before. Yeah, right? we have. Uh, the, Not for height, though. Right, right, right. Well, yeah. but, for, but for growth hormone release, yeah. sure. And yeah. if he's only 17, 18 years old, mm -hmm. Um, by the way, not to be a smart aleck, but the, the limiting factor is your genes. Okay. But again, just like the window we were talking about earlier, you can jigger that, uh, window or within that window, your height. So, you know, if he's short of stature, unnaturally so, and you know, uh, again, I, of course I have to say, and I'd recommend doing this through a physician, yeah. but maybe cost is a factor. And yeah, it is. I mean, growth hormone is ridiculously priced, uh, you know, I think okay. in the pharmacy for for a uh, uh, well, you're talking about probably close to you know thirty five hundred dollars or more per month for somebody okay. that age. Because remember, you need a lot more when you're younger. Okay. You're talking about uh, you know seven to nine IU's probably at a minimum for someone his age to get the results he's looking for. Oh, so wow. this might be a great avenue uh, cost wise. But again, I would recommend you know going through a physician. But he might have to do some explaining for our discussion earlier. Anyway, the GHRPs work through. Garolin, which is, uh, you know, through the stomach, and they can make you feel hungry about a half an hour you after you take them or inject them. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you definitely want to take them right before you go to bed, and I mean, you want to be zonked, not sitting there going, well, I'll watch a half hour of, you know, the late show before but I But GHRP2 does not make you hungry. But, well, it doesn't as much as six. Okay. Okay, I would say that six is definitely more strong than two, but two will still get your attention, <laughs> you know, so you don't want to be, you know, you know uh, making it look like a bomb went off in the kitchen, uh, you know, at midnight. Uh, so try and sleep through that is the point. Do it right before you go to bed. Okay. But yeah, I mean, those two mechanisms of action. I've seen uh, IGF-1 go up to about, uh, gosh, I had a gallon here at 324 uh, last week using the combination of GHRP-2 at uh, 200 mics in the evening with uh, just a half uh, milligram of Somorlin. And then a little bit of L-theanine, just for the <laughs> for the reason that that L-theanine is an amino acid that tends to make you switch to alpha brainwaves, so that you uh, more of a meditative state. Mm -hmm. So you're not sitting there going, "Oh my God, I hope this stuff kicks in before the you know," or "I fall asleep before the hunger stuff kicks in." <laughs> it helps you you know go to sleep a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, but that's pretty phenomenal. I mean, most uh, 17, 18 year olds, uh, healthy quote unquote normal, are going to be producing about three to three fifty. Uh, IGF-1, um, and IGF-1 as a as a surrogate, we use as a surrogate marker for growth hormone because growth hormone only lasts for about a half an hour and then it's it converts to IGF-1 and that stays around a lot longer so we can measure it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm using that. But, yeah. and, but you know, a lot of what we attribute to growth hormone is really attributable to IGF-1 anyway. So we might right. as well be talking about IGF-1. But yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is a great idea. Um, Again, dosing, uh, well, I just gave you a, kind of an idea of what I would use for someone who's older. You're going to have to probably experiment a little bit with someone who's younger, although you might argue you might even need even less because as long as his, uh, his physiology is, is working normally, he would probably be more receptive to it. We, we have to find out. I don't know. I mean, the studies on Jera were years ago, and we left that back, uh, gosh, I would say in the 70s at least. Uh, such that Jarif isn't even around anymore. Wow. Uh, they have Tessamorlin, uh, which is now used for something totally different. It's used for lipodystrophy in, in well, any lipodystrophy, particularly in wasting patients. Um, so do we do we answer the question? I mean, yeah, yeah I, I mean, so you're a big fan of Samorlin because you were telling me that you know, unlike growth hormone, which is very quick acting in body, Samorlin will actually produce your own production, which means that if you're stuck going out of town or you you don't have access to your growth hormone, it actually you're still producing. To me, it's a way smarter way of doing it because, yeah, I mean, I, I liken it to, you know, the fancy word is recrudescing the gland. So you're taking this this prune and you're turning it back into a plum so that every night when it works the way it normally does, you're not futzing with it, you're not overriding the system with something exogenously, you know, you're getting a, a good amount about an hour after you go to sleep, particularly mm -hmm. if you haven't eaten something before you go to bed, so you're not blocking the, the, the output by an insulin spike. And uh, yeah, I mean, it it'll take months typically for you to recrudesce the gland. I mean, so it'll take months. You know what? Uh, again, naming Richard Walker again, who's largely responsible for a lot of research, most of the research I would say with Samorlin, uh, the protocol usually is a loading dose for three to six months, depending upon your age. 
okay, for the gland to recrudesce. And then you got to expect pretty much the same thing in reverse, although it will happen quicker to, to turn back into a prune. But to your point, I mean, you know, you don't want to bring this stuff on a family vacation or, you know, to Vegas for a four day weekend with some girl you don't really know. And she's going to ask you like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> so leaving it at home, is no big deal. And you know, whereas with like, like you say, with growth hormone, exogenous growth hormone, People start getting dependent upon that, and you miss your shot. You miss your growth hormone. That's no bueno, right? Which is more expensive, would you say? That's a no-brainer. That one's easy. You're talking about, we mentioned earlier, uh, a typical dose for something like this particularly would be at least 3500 bucks a month, wow. in my opinion, yeah. based upon you know what you see in the market. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about 225 bucks a month for... Samorlin with GHRP. Wow. Yeah, it's a huge difference in price. So practically, now, it's still the same pain in the butt, literally, or not necessarily the butt, but you know, you still got to use a needle stick. Mm -hmm. Although he mentioned some other products like uh, Ibutamorin, which is a peptide omimetic, which is an oral. Mm -hmm. So it can survive stomach acid because it's not a peptide. Mm -hmm. um, and that's even easier. And then, and then you could take it to Vegas with you and just, you know, uh, yeah. pop it right before you go to bed. Because that, that mimics the growth hormone releasing peptides more than the growth hormone releasing hormones. I beat them more than I'm saying. They, they call it MK677. MK677. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice. Thanks, Doc.